redesigned, brand new pro, uh, platform. Um, they basically took a, a blank piece of paper and designed the radio they always wanted to build. Right. And it's been almost seven years they've been developing it, so it's been a long time coming. So custom silicon. Man. Custom silicon, two, basically two chips, a baseband chip and an RF chip. Um, so they can, by changing the RF chip in the future, they can roll it into any frequency band they want to. Mm -hmm. um, things that are different, right off the bat, it will do 100 megahertz wide channels. Actually, it will run 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 80, and 100 megs. It'll do split channels, so you can do 10 megs up and 50 megs down, even though it's a half duplex radio. Um, two full gigabit ports instead of a separate management that's only 100. And both ports can be used for data, and both ports can be used for PoE. So they're LACP? Uh, no, no, they're not, they're not bridged. They're actually connected into the CPU, so you can have two separate networks going through the radio to the same networks on the other end. Gotcha. But because you can't, you because can't the radio is a bridge. You can't bond the two together. Okay. But the radio itself, in its current form, doesn't really perform beyond one direction beyond a gig anyway, so what's the point? Okay. And if you're doing using like OSPF on both ends here and both ends on the other side, it'll sort it all out and you've got redundancy through the radio. Sure. Because it is, just like the other air fibers, it's a purely bridged radio. Gotcha. So you said they could do 100 megahertz channels in a lot of our environments. We don't have that much spectrum. Is there yep. some additional filtering and stuff like that? Oh, there's a ton of that. Uh, there's actually multiple receivers, multiple digital filters. Uh, it can do things like look at the channel you're on, look real time at either side of the channel, figure out where your noise is and dynamically filter it out. Uh, eventually, in, in future versions, they'll even be able to do some really tricky things like have multiple RF chip sets in a single radio. So you could have like a 30 meg channel at Uni 1 and a 50 meg channel at Uni 3 and have them both being used simultaneously. Um, but that, not today. Gotcha. Uh, currently shipping. To actually, it went on the uh, beta store earlier this or earlier today and sold out in like three minutes. Um, point to point, it won't stay that way forever. Okay. Um, it's not official, but it has capabilities beyond point to point. And Let's then put you it GPS sync as well. Right? All GPS sync and the sync, the frame frame to frame size sync will work with any of the GPS products, any of the other air fibers, or with the AC GPS sync. So you can collate, co uh, co-locate all this stuff and it'll just work. This is the HD version, same form factor as the 5X, so that it'll literally snap onto existing dishes, sectors, whatever. There's also the MX radio, which is the circle radio, basically the ISO station, prism station form factor. Works with any of the horn antennas, any of the, the horn sectors for shorter deployments. And this dish, which is a 500 millimeter, 27 dBi dish, basically the same gain as a two foot RD30, but it's only 500 millimeters, only 19 inches in diameter. Uh, extremely high efficiency. Uh, the MX circle or any of the ISO station or prism station radios will snap right onto the back. Uh, and it's what today it's a 500 they're looking at a 400 and probably will be looking at something bigger so the future. the horn on these guys what's the material they're made of obviously that one's well, this one yeah this but... is this is pretty yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, all of the horns except for the small 45 that comes on the ISO stations are cast aluminum okay what's the small small guy made out of the small it's plastic it's okay. it's uh, I forget exactly which plastic it is yes but it's uh, vapor deposition of, of uh, aluminum inside in order to actually make it work. It's like a coating inside. Yeah. It's like black sand yeah. with, with, with um, chrome yeah. coating. Yeah. Okay. So it's and but those only come actually if you buy a prism station with the 45 degree antenna, you get a cast you get a, a cast one, cast aluminum. One. So it's only the the ISO stations that come with the uh, the plastic. Cool. Any street price on these guys? Yeah, any MSRP? They went to the beta store at 375. 375.
Yeah. Yeah. Store 375, so, so maybe yeah. double that for street cars? No, it won't be anywhere near double that. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking for it to be a little bit north of what a 5X costs now. It's okay. So, and the performance is a little bit better. Yeah, it's better than a 5X now. It depends on, the, on exactly how you do it. The other cool thing about this is you think about the AF5X, They've been tweaking it for two years to improve the performance. They haven't even started that process on these yet. So these things are only going to get better and faster. So point to point day one, what do you think the release for multipoint will be? Like time rate, if you had, not even it's a ballpark, in the year. same state. Yeah, you're sometime end of year, first of next year. Okay. Possibly. Okay. The big thing is it's a real bear to get fixed frame radio to work with uh, point to multipoint properly. So what part of the issue was why it took so long for the AC radios to get GPS functioning well. Mm -hmm. They really don't want to le release this without it working really well. So point-to-point -point works beautifully today. It will work better. That's right. So when these things release, they're going to be... When they come out with point-to-multipoint, new MIMO and all the interesting new technologies everybody's... Yep. Waiting for. Well, the, the multi-user stuff, the high, higher than 2x2 two two for an outdoor unit like this doesn't really work that well. The main reason is in order for the chains to actually function correctly, you need to have a certain amount of isolation between the chains over the air. With uh, a cross-polarized antenna, you've got quite high isolation as long as you build the feed and everything correctly. Mm -hmm. Once you can try and put a third chain in there, it works very well on in an indoor environment because you're literally bouncing signals all kinds of different directions. When you have something outside, you, if first off, the distance is too far to have multipath give you very large differences in terms of angles or distances that things are shooting over. The, the difference in the, in the, we used to do it years ago with what were called rake receivers, but the, the difference trying to get chains over a distance really doesn't work all that easily. Mm -hmm. And going anything beyond a, a three by three outdoors, you really have to go to some type of a complex beam forming antenna, like what they're looking at for 5G now. Right, right. And now you're dealing, at five gig, you're dealing with arrays that are the size of your car. And that's just not practical. So that new MIMO is going to happen at uh, at, at V-band up at 60 and 80 gigahertz, yeah. but for this kind of stuff, I, it's really questionable as to whether it's whether and how it's really going to work decently. If you had to pick so. one new product out that you're most excited about, what is it? What do I need to check out? This right this, here? That's yeah. it? Yeah, this, this is a serious game changer. There isn't anything in the industry that even comes close to this. I mean, literally nothing. <laughs> That's cool. So it's, I've been testing these for quite a while. We have a number of people who've, who've had them up uh, on test links and, and been doing a lot of a lot of work with these, and they are spectacular. Excellent. So the these way guys are going to be on the AP side. What's going to be on the CPE side? Well, be that's really what, what this guy is designed for. I mean, you can certainly use these as either an access point or a CPE. It's right. an access so price point, point is a little cost prohibitive. It's right? a little higher. This is going to be less than this. But it's still on the high side cost-wise. It's not going to be an $89 radio. They could probably build one of these as an $89 radio, but you'd have to cut so many things out of it that you lose a lot of the performance, and is there really a market for that? Gotcha. Uh, you know, that's really the market that AC and even, depending on where you are, going all the way back to M-Series, fits very, very nicely. So we're still applying a lot of AC radios right now because they just work. Yeah. I wouldn't wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but for for point to points, certainly these. And the other thing I'm pushing a little bit for people to think about is what I call multi-point backhaul. For instance, we have a mountain where we have three sites on the side of a mountain. Right now we have individual backhaul links to all three of them. Using this, once the point to multi-point is available, we can put up a single dish at our, our main pop that can see all three of those sites, 
put up three of these, build three <laughs> multi-point connections that can handle a ton of data, and they're only using one RF channel. Interesting. <laughs> I mean, I can do that now with an N by N and air fibers, but I end up using up three channels. Whereas with this, I only use one channel. I mean, up on a tower, though, you're going to be more susceptible to interference and things like that, right? So. Well, but that's what a lot of the internal the filtering sector. can handle. Yeah. Um, because you've got the capability of dynamically being able to filter out. It's, it's sort of a digital version of what the PRISM system in the AC PRISM radios does, right. which can make a significant performance increase, and this can too. Uh, and that's that's really that's really the difference between the prism, right? It's a fixed filtration yeah, versus this is right, dynamic. Right, because what the prism actually does is it's more like an old style super heterodyne system where it's actually down converting using a saw filter in order or a series of saw filters to filter that down converted signal and then up converting it back and then it goes into the receiver. And that works very well when you have a, a fixed platform that's been optimized for it, but had being able to do that in the digital domain, or a combination of digital control and baseband and a, a, a purpose-built RF chip that can handle that, <laughs> makes this work way faster, actually work better, and it's programmable. So you can have the software dynamically look at what's going on and make decisions based on what it's seeing real time. That's cool. That's cool. So, Do you think there's going to be any visibility to that filtration via like SNMP or something like that? Something that people can graph and map. I don't know. Uh, that I, there could be. There's no reason not to. It'd be really cool. Uh, no, it could be really. It'd give you a lot really of insight cool. in the environment and what's happening. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Because you see some uh, degradation. There's so much intelligence built into that chipset. Oh yeah. It already knows. Absolutely. It knows what it's hearing and it's responding in a specific way. Yep. I would love to be able to graph that over time. Yeah. It's all there. Well, and the other thing, of course, since it has multiple receivers or on the chip, yeah. it can easily do things like air view simultaneously with operating yeah, like question. those. Yeah, yeah. can do it like the uh, yeah. prism radio. It, it will be able to. The current firmware, depending on the version, doesn't do that right now. Okay. But that's just a firmware upgrade, basically. Yeah. Uh, the current <laughs> firmware, the, the platform was actually yeah. built on an older version of firmware. If you if you look at what ships with these right now, it's actually Air OS 7. 8 will probably be in the next month or so. Mm. They've been working on revving it to be 8 so it'll look like everything else does. Um, not a lot of, well there are always functional improvements that are coming out, but it's just that's what the, the, group, the software group started with, so that's what it looks like today. But very, very quickly, it's going to have uh, version 8 that you can just upload. Yeah, because that lack of real-time spectral analysis is probably one of the one downside yeah. with these. Because it's just with really fives, nice to yeah. be able to see what's going on Absolutely. and move stuff around. Absolutely. Yeah. And with the multiple receivers inside the chip, you can now do that kind of thing. Yeah. So. I'm super keen on... Um, Automation, right? So if, if the information's available and you guys can make it available to me, I would love to turn that stuff over time. Yeah. It's oh, it's, it, there's, there's the, the many possibilities of what you can do with this stuff are endless. Yeah. It's just a question of if and when making the product work and making that information available. Yeah. And some of that becomes a business decision. Some of that is technical. I mean, there's lots of things that are possible technically that the people who make those decisions may decide they don't want to make it visible. Yeah, um, and if it's not, uh, if the priority is you know, stabilizing the hardware and doing all these things, absolutely. analytics is probably the last of your concerns. Yeah, it's, I mean, yes and no. I mean, you always want to have that stuff available and you're thinking about it. But the reality is, yeah, making sure the product really works well for the majority of users is the very first thing you've got to have happen or nobody's going to buy it. Yeah, so, absolutely makes sense. Yeah. No, these well, are in the beta store this morning for about 10 minutes. <laughs>